Today we will read Amos 6. O to you who are at peace in Zion and trust in Mount Samaria, notable persons in the chief nation to whom the house of Israel comes. Go over to Kalne and see, and from there go to Hamath and the Great. Then go down to Goth of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms? Or is their territory greater than your territory? O to you who put far off the day of doom, who cause the seat of violence to come near, who lie on beds of ivory, stretch out on their couches, eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idly to the sound of the string instruments and invent for yourselves musical instruments like David, who drink wine from bowls and anoint yourselves with the best ointments, but are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Therefore they shall now go captives as the first of the captives, and those who recline at banquets shall be removed. The Lord God has sworn by himself. The Lord God of hosts says, I abode the pride of Jacob and hate his palaces. Therefore I will deliver up the city and all that is in it. Then it shall come to pass that if ten men remain in one house, they shall die. And when a relative of the dead, be the one who will burn the bodies, picks up the bodies to take them out of the house, he will say to one inside the house, Are there any more with you? Then someone will say, None. And he will say, Hold your tongue, for we dare not mention the name of the Lord. For behold, the Lord gives a command. He will break the great house into bits, and the little house into pieces. Do horses run on rocks? Does one plough there with oxen? Yet you have turned justice into gall, and the fruit of righteousness into wormwood. Yet who rejoice over low labor? Who say, Have we not taken carnoin for ourselves by our own strength? But behold, I will raise up a nation against you, O house of Israel, says the Lord God of hosts, and they will afflict you from the entrance of Hamad to the valley of the Arabah. Amen. 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 So the prophet is continuing the prophecy and uh, he is warning the nation of Israel and uh, let them come back to the Lord if they rebel, if they refuse to obey the word of the Lord, the voice of the Lord. Uh, he said, you are going to for captivity. So, you know, we saw the foundation for the chapter is, we know, the, the God which we serve, you know, the universe, the God of the universe, His righteousness and justice are the foundation of His throne. So, so if somebody, if they are not righteous or justice, so God intervened, He stepped in in the nation, in the people or in the family and bring back the righteousness and justice to the nation. So here the chapter which we read, uh, God said the, uh, the, the prophet is prophesying, he, he continues his prophecy, woe to you who are at ace in Zion. You know, if you read some other translation, so the word they use for Yes, is complacent, you know, or luxurious life, luxurious life. You know, uh, people in Zion, Zion, the, you know, Zion is for Jerusalem, this is for Judah. So, the people of Judah, the, the children of the Lord, they live a luxurious life, they are complacent life. You know, uh, so God, He warned the people, you know, to remove all the luxurious and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, luxury, you know, today, uh, you know, even the churches, churches, they are living like a luxurious life. Even the, in the ministers, they have their own plane, they have big, big car. You know, we need a car, we need everything. But everything, the way which we can able to uh, simplify our lifestyle and to spend much money to the work of the Lord. So here, you know, the people, the Judah, the people live in Jerusalem, they live a luxurious life, a complacent life. So God won the people. God said, you know, woe to you who are at a, a, a complacent living. Complacent living. You know, God... He give the life for us to live with joy and happy 
and to be with the Lord. You know, that is the, the, the call of the Lord. So when we have luxurious life, so God said, you know, oh, you know, because the, the nation, you know, the church today, the preachers today, you know, we are getting money from, for, uh, for the ministry. So that money, when we live a luxurious life, so God bring judgment. So also God, the, the nation of Israel, you know, the 10 tribes, here they put for Samaria. Samaria is for the 10 tribes of uh, nation of Israel. So the, the Samarian, instead of trusting the Lord, so they trust their mountain, their own strength, their own strength. You know, during this time, when during this time of the, when the prophet prophesied, Amos prophesied, the, the uh, Israelite, they have a good wealth. You know, they, they are so prosperously, they are very rich. And also their army in those days, they have a very good army. So they have good army, their uh, economy is very good. They are so blessed, you know, materially, materially so, uh, so they are very blessed. But they, instead of uh, hold their faith to the Lord, instead of trusting their Lord, they started to trust the mountain. Here you can say the mountain means the luxurious life. The, their wealth and their army. So God said, woe to you, woe to you. You know, if you take the word and if, if you apply the, the, the content to the present churches or the nation which we live, you know, we have a, you know, before the coronavirus come to this land, we have good econo economy, everybody, they have a luxurious life, luxurious life. But you know, everybody, they started to trust their own self. Trust their own self. You know, it's a good warning. People of God trusted religious rituals. Last week, we saw all the religious rituals and the government and their own strength. So, if somebody, they put their trust in the material, materialism, so God will bring judgment. You know, as the children of the Lord, so we should trust the Lord. We not uh, our own understanding. We can read in Proverbs. You know, we should trust the Lord. And, and uh, we should lean on Him. For uh, we should not hold any of our own understanding. Lean not our own understanding. So here, the nation, the God's people, they trusted the Lord. So in our nation, you know, instead of, you know, we put the name in Lord, we trust you know, it is the, just like that, you know, it is, it is in the, uh, our coins and all the, you know, the dollars. But nobody, bond, nobody really mean into it. Nobody trusts the Lord for everything. But, you know, now everything gone. The same way here, God brought judgment to the nation. So here again, then God said, Notable person in the chief nation. So they trusted their army, the notable person, the people, those who are in good position, and the army, and the rich people. They started to rely and trust those people. So here God said, the notable person in the chief nation, to whom the house of Israel comes. They will, instead of looking upon the Lord, they, whatever they, when they face the problem, they used to look upon the people. So, God said, you know, woe to you. You know, you know, you know we can apply the same to, in our own life, in our own spiritual life. So, something happened in our life. You know, immediately we should look upon the Lord. We should trust the Lord. Not trust somebody's prayer. Not uh, trust Somebody, you know, they are, if I call them, they will pray. You know, then, uh, but the God, you know, that is for a you know, period of time. Period of time. When the children of God, when we are, grow, uh, when we are grown in the Lord, we, uh, we should focus, full our focus to the Lord. To, to do something happen, we trust the Lord, we pray, we plead the Lord for mercy. You know, that is the expectation. So here, the nation... 
they trust their own materialism so then god said second verse go over galna and see and from there go to hamath the great then go down to gath the philistines so these are the city you know uh, god is taking making them you know if you uh, if you move if you went to a tour for these city you can go galnat you know these are the cities in the syria um, uh, you can see that one you know jerusalem and the neighboring nation is syria you know these cities uh, in the big city in those days in syria so god said go and watch these cities you know then god said are you better than these kingdoms so god is asking them god is asking them are you better than these these cities or your nation is better than this nation here two question he is asked are you better than these kingdoms or is their territory is greater than your territory so god is asking what make you to special what make you to special so the sri also in those days the army is very good they are very rich also so but god said you know you have good army you have good wealth but what make you to a special so if you read exodus 33 16 please so what makes special to israel exodus 33 16 for how then will it be known that your people and i have found grace in your sight except you go with us so shall so we shall be separate your people and i from all the people who are upon the face of the earth amen amen deuteronomy 47 For what great nation is that that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason we may call upon Him. Amen. So the you know Moses said, you know what make great because of the presence of the Lord, because of you, Lord, we are great in this earth, in this world. Why? Because not because of our wealth, not because of our army. We have a good army. we are so clever we are so brilliant than the egyptian lord because of your presence you are with us because of you we are greater than the rest of the world the rest of the nation so so god is asking so what make you to greater not because of wealth not because of the army it is because of the lord but the people of the 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 people of god now they left their god they left their god so god said you know you and the pagan nation in the, in the scale which god has they have the same they pagan nation so when god put nations or or individuals in his uh, scale so get them god will bring judgment so god said you know i made you a special nation a royal priesthood you know we you know first peter we read what makes special the children of the lord today the christians because of the lord because of the blood of jesus christ we are saved by the blood of jesus christ god is in our midst the holy spirit god in our midst so if he is not in our midst so we are not led by the holy spirit we and the other people are the same are the same so we will face we will face the judgment of the law so so what is make you and me to be special the blood of the lord the the blood of jesus christ the name of the lord the presence of the holy spirit the presence the triune god the presence of the triune god so you and me always trust in the lord not trust in our own wealth not trust our our own uh, family family or trust anything you and me trust the lord so if not when we are not trust the lord so then god will bring judgment god will bring god is the righteous god you know 
the Lord is same yesterday, today and tomorrow. God, that's why God revealed to Moses, he was the, I am that, who I am. And Jesus said, I am, Jesus Christ is yesterday, today and tomorrow. He never changed. God never changed. So, the same God brought judgment to the nation of Israel, then he is not in our midst. He is not in the midst of the churches. So, God will bring judgment. Judgment. So, we and me to trust the Lord. So here, Amos is warning Judah and Israel not to think that they are any better than the great nations. Great nations. So, in the, pres in the presence of the Lord, whoever has the Lord, they are the great people. So, next, we, in the third verse we, we read, then the, uh, the prophet is continuing. Woe to you, who put far off the day of doom. You know, people used to say, you know, God is coming. People used to say, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. You know, you know, the day is coming for a long time. But, you know, generally people used to think that. Think that. So, you know, the same way, the people in Israel, in those days, they said, who put far off the day of doom. You know, you know, all the prophets, they are prophesying uh, for the judgment of the Lord. But nothing has happened. We are safe. We have a good king. We have a good army. We have our economy is good. Nothing. We, are, we will be safe. The doom is coming for a long time, after a long time. So by the time we are gone. So that's why people used to think. So here the prophet, you know, in those days they, the Israelites and the Judah, the the Jewish nation, they thought in their mind. And God said, Woe to you who put far off the day of doom, who caused the seat of violence to come nearer, nearer. If you, you know, today the church, you know, what are the mistakes the Israelites and the Jewish people they done in the past, today the church is doing the same. The, the Christians are doing the same. So Jesus warned the church. If you read Matthew 24, 45 to 41, could you kindly read? Matthew 24, 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant who his master had made ruler over his household to give them food in two seasons? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, find, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him into and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. See, the, the same thing. Jesus, he won the church. Won the church. You know, in the within the church, they have a group, two kind of people. So one kind of people, they are very serious. They are very serious. They took the word with a very serious and they preached the Lord and they are ready, ready to meet the Lord. And they are, they are clean before the Lord. They are waiting for the Lord. And the other, other group of people, they are, oh, Jesus Christ is coming. People are saying for a long time, they, he won't come. He won't do anything. You know, he is so full of love. He will take care. He will, like that, you know, people used to think. But Jesus said, when his coming, his coming is like a thief. Thief, anytime, sudden. Sudden, he can come to, you know, he can, but... Nobody know our end. Nobody know our end. You know, so God said, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. The, the, we saw uh, two weeks ago, prepare yourself to meet the Lord. So, always we should be ready to meet the Lord. To, to our spiritual life, you and me, to be clean before the Lord. To ready to meet the Lord. To meet the Lord. So, here... The people, the, the Israelites, they are not ready to meet the Lord. They
they live their own life god wants them wants them and also uh, you know the other, the fourth word he said who lies on bed of ivory stretches out on your couches you know ivory it's a you know it's a very expensive bed and uh, it's a big couches they are living a luxurious life luxurious life they want uh, bother about the lord they won't bother about anybody just they will bother about themselves you can see here they anoint themselves they anoint themselves so this is the self motivated self centered life self centered life so if anybody even the church ministries even the ministries if it is self self centered so god will bring judgment even our our own spiritual life should not be self centered self centered all the gifts which god gives us it's not it not to be self centered it is for the people of the lord it is for the benefit of the church it is for the benefit why god bless these nations because of his grace and mercy because the covenant he made with abraham isaac and jacob because of the covenant so here because of the cry of the abraham and jacob and isaac because of their cry because they are so faithful to the lord the call which god called them god bless their generation but when they receive the blessings so these people they lived a luxurious life so that bring god's judgment they that bring they are not trust the lord so they look they they have a big bed they live a luxurious life if you read uh, deuteronomy 21 18 to 21 please if a man has a stubborn and a rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and to and who when they have chastened him will not heed them then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out of the elders of his city to the gate of his city and they shall say to the elders of his city this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious he will not obey our voice he is a gluten and drunker then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones so you shall put away the evil from among you and israel and all israel shall hear and fear amen amen it's a great warning the lord gave to uh, the commandment which lord gave to moses you know this is the law so god said you know if somebody live a luxurious life you know you can read here they eat lamb from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall who sing idol to sound of stringed instrument you know they live a luxurious life they eat eat very rich food meat all the time and when they sing songs sing songs and hear all the music but you know so god said the warning through moses if somebody live like that if somebody if a person if uh, is, uh, is a child live with always eat good food and not doing anything or not listening their parents and you know uh, uh, camp around the cities moving around the cities not doing anything doing all kind of evil thing so god said you know, the parents to bring the children in front of the elders in the city and the elders to stone so god to you know god said you know these kind of people will bring destruction to the nation but you know now the whole nation they they over eating they they live a luxurious life luxurious life so that bring god's judgment god's judgment you know we should eat a good food we should eat a good food but you know all the time thinking about food thinking about restaurant thinking about uh, uh, vacations that is not good we can go one 
once in a while for a vacation but not all the time all the time to live a to uh, live a luxurious life that make to forget the law of the lord and that make forget the lord that destroy our spiritual life so here god said um, so no you know because your lifestyle is like that so god said i will bring uh, israel will be brought low brought low and they will who sings idly to the sounds of stringed instrument and invent for yourself musical instrument like david david we want to sing like david you know generally people used to say you know people those who are now those who are calling themselves as a worshipers they will they will quote david david sing david dance so we want to dance so they used to you know india uh, sometimes they you know in the pulpit they are teaching how to take a step evil people you know you know this is kind of the the luxurious life and they are eating good food you know if somebody eat food and live a luxurious life they want to dance they want to enjoy the world but you know if you take david you know david he he dance he was he was a king when the when the presence of the law the ark of the covenant so he want he desire the ark of the covenant to be in his city so in the in the during the time of saul nobody bother about the ark of the covenant god saul he he want to keep his possession he want to always uh, focus in his possession to to take control he want to be the king he he never bother about the presence of the lord but god throw him but when god brought david so he want to bring back he want to look for the presence of the lord he want to look for the 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 tabernacle the tabernacle that the he want to be bring the presence of the lord to his city so so he want to the great love and compassion he seek the uh, what is that hmm? ark of the covenant he seek for the ark of the covenant and he want to to be brought to his city ark of the covenant so because the presence he enjoyed he really enjoyed his presence of the lord he danced he danced no that is the great difference between the dance of david and the people those who are dancing today today they want to make money they want to uh, take the uh, the the youth for a destruction so it's a two evil things they are taking the uh, idea of david the for the worship and uh, and they are claiming themselves they are doing like that bring destruction you know the same way in those days the, you know all is history you know history is always kind of all the things which they the israelites failed today churches are doing so everybody quote the word david dance i want to dance but here god said i am going to bring judgment you can dance but i will bring judgment so we should be very careful very careful to take the word to take quote somebody's life for our own benefit that should not god bring judgment so they said we want to make instrument like david we want to be sing like david david but they drank they intoxicate themselves they they eat over over eating you know if you read uh, uh proverbs uh, 23 20 could you kindly read 23 20 do not mix with wine beavers or with glutinous eaters of meat amen so so here you know when these people when these people the people those who were those so called worshipers they will do they won't sit in the presence of the lord presence of the lord so they will after the the service they will eat and drink drink but if a real man of the lord if if somebody want to worship the lord in the public so they will 
fast in the presence of the Lord, they will cry for the people, those who are coming to the worship service, they will sit in the presence of the Lord. They will, uh, they will uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, and then they will come and when they will lead the worship, then people will be really blessed. Really were blessed. That's why in Ephesian Bible says we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not filled by the, the, the wine or evil things. You and me. So if somebody really lead worship, if somebody lead uh, worship the Lord, first one, we should cleanse our life. We should ask the Lord to wash us the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash and prepare us and to be in the presence of the Lord. Cry for people, those who come to the worship services. And then, when we stand, then really people will be repent. Repent. But, he, you know, that's why David did. When David did, when Bible said, when David brought the Ark of the Covenant. People rejoiced. People rejoiced because of the presence of the Lord. Presence of the Lord. So here, they want to sing music. Today, you know, when people sing song, only we can hear the music, loud voices. Nobody bother about the word, which what they are singing. You know, if you, re if you take the old hymns, if you take the old hymns, when sometimes when you sing the old hymns, you know, you really, you will cry because of the word. Because the people, those who wrote the psalm in the old hymns, they experienced the presence of the Lord. They are led by the Holy Spirit. Really, they are anointed by the Holy Spirit and they wrote the song. And But here, you know, a lot of songs are coming today without any meaning. Without any meaning, you know, this is the word they use, uh, who sings idly, you know, without no meaning, nothing, they will sing, loud music, the music make to people dance, you know, they, the, all the beat they give for the music, it make you to dance, you know, that is the evil idea, evil idea, but somebody really to be, bring the presence of the Lord, that is the real worship. To presence of the Lord, people will repent. People will cry. You know, if you take yourself, take yourself. When you worship the Lord in our own chamber, asking the Lord, praising the name of the Lord, to be in the presence of the Lord without your knowledge, you will cry. You will cry. I am pretty sure everybody will experience that presence. That is the presence of the Lord. That is the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord, the worship always lead people to repentance. That is why, you know, the worship is about. Worship is about to make people to repent to the Lord. But here, they are eating good food. They are, they are intoxicated by wine. Now they want to, with, uh, you know, they are, they are in the bed, in the luxurious bed. And they want to hear these kind of music. Use kind of music. God said, you know, you are, I'm going to bring about judgment. And also these people, they won't bother about others. If you read, you know, Luke 19.27, uh, sorry, 16, Luke 16, 19, we know about the, the rich man and the Lazarus story. So that, you know, you know, if you read the if you read the parable, if you read the parable or real story, because Jesus, you know, only this, you know, this, this parable, he mentioned the name. So I believe probably that this might be a true story. So because he mentioned the name Lazarus, he never, he didn't mention the rich man. So, so here, as we read the, the incident, here, the, if you read the carefully, Jesus, he never he, the, the rich man, he never did any sin. You know, if you read it, can you read it? So Luke 16, the, the, the incident. Certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. 
But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sorts who was laid at his feet, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's blossom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments and hate, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his blossom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this plight. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. Amen. So if you read, you know, the, about the, the rich man, he was not a sinner. But if you read the, you know, 19 verse very carefully, the rich man, who was clothed with purple and fine linen and fair sometimesly every day and he never bothered about the poor man He's, he sat in his in the in the, his gate he never bothered about him so that made a big sin that brought judgment of the lord he was in the in the hell in the hell. So, you know, these people, you know, the same thing, you can see it here. So, they eat, they, they never bother about anybody. They not bother about the people, the, they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. The Joseph, you know, here, uh, you know, the prophet mentioned, the rest of the poor people, as we know, Joseph, he was afflicted in the jail. His brothers, his own brother, he want to destroy him, to want to kill him. So he saw him, and he was in the uh, in Egypt, and he is in the jail. So the rest of their his brother, they are not bothered about him. So the same way, the Israelites uh, in those days, people those who are rich, they want to enjoy, enjoy the prosperity. <coughs> enjoy the blessing they probably say i thank the lord praise the lord they will you know they will include the name of the lord also and you know that's why it's coming in the back so and also they will enjoy you know today we can apply that same thing to our our own life when we are not bothered about the people surround in the world people probably for the churches today in different nations people are going through persecution but we are not bothering about them. We are not, uh, we are not praying for them. You know, maybe, maybe in the sight of the Lord, we may be like this. We have, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this nation. We are getting good food. We have get good food. We are so blessed. We are not bothering about the church of the Lord, the, the, the people of the Lord, people, those who are suffering. That maybe. Maybe, you know, God may think like this. So you and me, you and me, children of the Lord, always to think about our own brothers and sisters, our, your, our neighbors, our neighbors, our own community. What way we are praying for people. So we want people to come to the knowledge of Christ. We want, let the spiritual, spiritual, Spirituality of people should not be like darkened, not poor. We want to make them to accept Christ. You know, so you and me, you and me to think about others, to think about our neighbors, to think about the, the church of the Lord today throughout the world. So here they forgot. Uh, if you read, you know, Deuteronomy, 15, 7 to 11, 7 to 11. If there is among you a poor man of your brethren within any of the gates in your land, which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from your poor brother, but you shall open your hand wide to him, and willingly lend him sufficient for his need, whatever he needs. Beware lest there be a wicked thought in your heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release is at hand. And your eye be evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing. And he cries out to the Lord against you, and it becomes sin among you. 
You shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him. Because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand. For the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. Amen. It's a beautiful, you know, God already, He gave the commandment to the Israelites, how they want to live. So, if God bless, you know, the verse 10, it says, because for these things, you want to take care of the needy one, the poor people, the poor people, people those who are poor in spirit, people those who are not accepted Christ. So, that is your duty and my duty to share the, our wealth. To make people to understand, to sending missionaries. So, you know, that's why we are involving the mission, mission work. We are praying for the, the nation throughout the world. Why? We are, because God brought us here, He gave us uh, blessings and we want to, our mind and heart to be with them, thinking, you know, based on these scriptures. <clears throat> so, here, you hear the people of the Lord, they never bother about the poor people. They will say, you know, because they sin or they, they are poor. No, we, you know, God said, because you want to provide the food to the needy, I blessed you. You know, why we are so rich, uh, blessed spiritually? You and me to share our blessing. You and me to share Jesus Christ to somebody. That's why we are hearing the word, hearing and praying the, all these things to lead, to share, to share our spirituality to be shared to the poor people, those who are not knowing the Lord. So, if not, if not, so in the sight of the Lord, it is not good. You know, sometimes God will bring judgment. So here, God said, Therefore, therefore, verse 7, he said, because of all these things, because of all these things, you are not done your part. Because, therefore, they shall now go captive as the first of the captives. And those who recline at banquet shall be removed. So God said, you are the one going Captivity first. When the, you know, the prophecy was exactly fulfilled. Exactly fulfilled. When the Assyrian, they came to the land of Israel, they destroyed all the ivory, you know, couches, all their uh, summer houses. They destroyed everything. And they took all the rich people. Rich people. They destroyed their wealth. And they took all the rich people for captivity. Captivity. You know, that's why Jesus, he warned the church. He warned the church. If you read uh, Luke 17 and 27, so could you kindly read? They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Amen. You know, probably when you read the word, eat, drink, and marry. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it look like to think, it's not, you know, eating is a good thing, you know, we want to eat for life. We want to drink. We want to drink water. So, you want to manage, you want to, you know, uh, have a family. But here, you know, if you read the, 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 the whole passage, they are not bothering about the Lord. They are not seeking the Lord. They are not trusting the Lord in the during the time of Noah. So they want to do all evil practices. Always, always eating. Always live a luxurious life. A luxurious life. So that bring God judgment. It is going, you know, it is happening today. So God's why God brought coronavirus to shake the land. To shake all the world, to people, you know, throughout the world, throughout the world, luxurious life, and yet drank and married wives, several marriages, evil things. So God 
shake the whole earth to make the people to think about the maker to think about the lord the creator the creator so it was there in the time of noah so god brought judgment god brought judgment so so here god said therefore because of these things because of these things so god bring judgment to the nation of israel so then uh, the the lord god has sown by his himself the lord of god of the lord god of hosts says i abhor the pride of jacob and hate his places you know god hate pride you know all these things you know if you take all the verses you know if somebody's pride is not you know it's it's outward expression so all the the plenty the blessings all the plentiful all the luxurious life made people to be pride pride i am proud for my proud for you i am pride for you i you know like that people used to say that so god said uh, i abhor the pride of jacob god hate god hate you know as we know the scriptures proverbs 334 first peter 55 james 46 this verse say god resist the proud but gives grace to the humble our heart to be humble our heart to be humble in the presence of the lord in our own lifestyle wherever we go wherever we go our thought our life our ways to be humble to reflect the lord jesus christ is the humble person god in person he walked this earth with a great humbleness great humbleness with a great meekness so you and me to be like our lord humbleness humbleness so our words to be humble our attitudes to be humble so here they because of all these wealth they make them to be right you know uh, people used to say you know a rich man that's why jesus said a rich man enter to the kingdom of the lord is it is very difficult god jesus said if a camel enter into the i have a needle i have a needle so that much difficult you know because of the all these things make us to forget our maker make us to forget our salvation salvation so when god blesses you know blessing is a good you no know, god blessed abraham god blessed isaac we we need we want to be blessing this nation we want you know when we blessed then only we can be a blessing so we should get the blessing material blessing but we should not focus our for uh, put our trust on the material blessing to focus on the material blessings our focus and trust to be the lord that's why god's expectation so here if the nation of israel they fail they fail because they fail you know god brought judgment through the assyrians when the assyrians invaded the land israel they destroy all the people here you can read uh, in verse 9 then it shall come to pass then 10 men remain in one house they shall die they will kill everybody assyrians assyrians and also if somebody is remain you know for example 10 if 11 people in a house they kill 10 and they they left one probably he may be Uh, deeply wounded maybe he has life if somebody come and ask he, uh, he want to uh, bury the body and uh, if somebody is relate you is coming if anybody de- dead in your house we want to bury so the person who who has life who has left alone <coughs> he used to say don't say the lord don't say the lord probably the man was all alone maybe cry for somebody for help to somebody lords we need i need help for somebody to come and 
take out the uh, the dead bodies probably he may pray uh, because of his prayer somebody come and knock the door any dead body and uh, he probably may thought oh god answered my name prayer but the other person said don't say the name of the lord because these people they proclaim the name of the lord in a way you know that is the commandment we know you know we should not take the name of the lord in a way in a way you know today the church taking the lord in vain taking the lord you know people used to say god said you know people will think their own when when probably uh, they think in their own mind and they will put in the name of the lord god god said god said everybody everybody you know today culture everybody god said god showed this person i want to marry god said uh, i want to take this job you know instead of getting clear direction from the lord from the lord to think our own and put our our thought and mind in the will of the lord and when we say all these things when god brought judgment so the then they will cry they will cry so here the israelites in those days they they took the name of the lord in vain for their own luxurious life so then god brought judgment then they understand we we took the name of the lord in vain now he said the someone say hold your tongue for we dare not mention the name of the lord name of the lord so now they fear the name of the lord fear so if we are not feared today the church of the lord is not fear today so god will bring judgment so then the so then uh, the lord gives a command he will break the great house into bits and the little house into pieces pieces and god said do two things he said do horses run the rock you know horses will run in the plain surface not in the rock rock surface only the deer they will run in the rock place and also does anyone plow their oxen so oxen they will plow with the bulls you know bulls so these two things they won't use it use it so god said so you want to use it you know the justice you know this is not good to make the horse to run in the rocky place make the in the rocks or blow the oxen in the field you you know this is wrong but why you are but yet you have turned justice into gall and the fruit of righteousness into wormwood so you made the uh justice and righteousness into bitter bitter you are not bothering about the righteousness and the justice justice nobody bother about justice and righteousness they made it a bitter so god said because of that you know because of that i know as i mentioned the the first uh, word itself that is the the foundation of the the lord the the kingdom of the lord justice and righteousness so you and me to have the moral so god said you who reject over uh, low debo who says have be not taken harming for yourself by our own step so these are the two nations the neighboring nation uh, you know cities the israelites they took you know if you read in second kings 14 uh, jeroboam 2 so god blessed him god blessed him and god prophesied sends a uh, prophet to the king jeroboam 2 and god said 
you will take control of these two city because of the grace of the grace and mercy of the lord the israelites they capture these two city the low debor and karnaim do truti but when god by grace they got they won the city when after they won the battle they thought because of our army because we are good army because of our own because we are so clever than the the that people so they started to boast themselves so god said you uh, you are rejoice over the cities and you are said by your own strength you are saying my own strength i got this you know this is we should be very careful when we get some promotion when we when we we got some blessings from the lord we should not say because i am so smart because i am good in studies because of my hard work yes you know we should work hard we should you know god give good intelligence everything is pure from the lord but we should not boast ourselves not trust in our own strength and you should say because of the grace of the lord grace of the lord that's why we should always if somebody praises to you praises so you and me to say in our heart and our mouth because of the grace of the lord because of the mercy of the lord so children so you and me to be to always to say because the grace and mercy so here the israelites they boasted they boasted god said you know i will raise up nations against you o house of israel says the lord god hosts and they will afflict you from the entrance of hamath to the valley of so when the is when the assyrians when they invaded the nation of israel they made the israelites they they humiliated they they want to you know all the, they 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 remove all their cloth and make them to walk naked to their uh, to the assyrian city so that is a you know because because they are not trust the lord they are their own strength they are, they trusted their own strength god allowed pride go before the destruction so we and you and me to be humble the children of the lord you know this is a good lesson for the church today so you and me to be humble we should be trust the lord always we should always think about our uh, others and also we should always thank the lord to humble before the lord and always to worship the lord worship the lord to be filled with the spirit of the holy spirit so let's think ourselves and let's humble ourselves and ask the lord to be filled with his holy spirit our loving heavenly father